that. Okay, the sell-off in Tesla shares looks ugly any way you slice it as investors shun high multiple tech companies. Tesla stock is down 8% in the past five days, 12% in the last month, and off by 40% year to date. Let's bring Yahoo Finance senior auto correspondent, Proz Subramanian here for a chat on this Tesla route. Wow, Proz. And I say wow because Tesla's been doing pretty well. Yeah, you know, it's not necessarily a fundamental story size. There's a lot of like just kind of bad headlines over the last six months, right? You know, China shutdowns. This is no no particular order here. China shuts down, shut down sending supply, right? You have um, the German Giga not supposedly fully ramped up, right? Um, autopilot investigations, right? This big overhang with NHTSA kind of going after Tesla on these uh, these crashes at these at these uh, emergency sites. Um, Ford and Rivian beating Tesla to the to the electric pickup truck, mm -hmm. right? They, Tesla's not out yet. There's no Cybertruck. Yeah, right? come on. B Bitcoin and crypto are getting hammered, right? Uh, Tesla has a lot of Bitcoin on the on the balance sheet that could take a that be, can be an impairment in the next next quarter. Mm -hmm. And then the question is like, is Elon distracted, right? You talk about Twitter, you talk about getting involved with politics, getting involved with, you know, um, SpaceX and, and Boring Company. That's so, these are all these things that are kind of taken away from the, the, the question of Tesla performing right now. Okay. Well, the Cybertruck is going to be in the metaverse. We saw that yeah, in exactly. the background <laughs> of the NASDAQ opening bell today. Yeah. But let's get back to Musk and going after Twitter in, and via an acquisition here and what that's done to Tesla shares as well here in tandem. Because if we go back to the beginning of April where this started to get disclosed, there's a really stark kind of reaction that we've seen from both of these companies' stock and the price action there. Yeah, every time you hear about you know, the Twitter deal kind of going on the rocks, Tesla gets a little pop, right? Because this overhang of, is Elon, how many shares has he got to pledge to make this deal? Any kind of margin situation going on with his holdings of Tesla stock, which are like tremendous, right? You know, but I got to go back to that, but the Tesla fundamental story size, like, mm -hmm. you know, what, what hasn't really changed? You know, demand is, is, is through the roof and there's supply constraints. You said that for many quarters in a row, you have, People buy more and more EVs, and in Q1 we saw that doubling compared to last year. Gas prices are high, so a lot of these fundamental stories for the company are pretty good. So maybe there's some a silver lining here coming into going into Q2 earnings for them because not that has not changed. You're a well-known auto reviewer. I'm always reading your reviews, Praz. And do you think Tesla has to pick up its quality game? I've been recently riding around in some Teslas, and you know, obviously, of course, look, they're nice. I get it. I totally understand the fascination with them. But this next wave of EVs that has come to market, notably from high-end makers, mm -hmm. uh, is really calling into question if Tesla can keep the quality where it is. Uh, it's not where it needs to be. I think there's so many facets to that question, right? Because you have, like, initial fans, they don't care, right? I love Tesla. I don't care, but the quality car is great. As you get more and more people like uh, marginal buyers want to come in, I want to try Tesla. Like, why is the door panel falling off? Why is there squeaks and rattles everywhere? That could be a problem, but I just see, you know, initial customer quality stuff is like still pretty high for them. So you have this data there, but they also have like a lot of anecdotal pieces of news where people are really disappointed in the Polestar car. Polestar just covered. came out. I, I reviewed a Polestar, incredibly mm. impressive yeah. vehicle. I guess that's because of the, the attachment to Volvo, but still, I mean, there's a noticeable difference between a, a quality of a Polestar, where it's not exactly upper end or luxury compared to a Tesla Model 3. Yeah, I mean, 100%, even a Kia EV6, Every panel gap is is the same, uniform. Everything, there's no squeaks and rattles. Everything's fit and finished perfect compared to the Tesla. There's a lot of kind of, you know, quality issues, you might want to call it, but right. it doesn't matter to their fans for some reason. Does Tesla, in their operations, the raw materials constraints as part of the broader supply chain, does that force them to then look to alternative suppliers, source materials elsewhere, and how does that impact quality, to Sazi's point? Yeah, I think that's sort of the big question going forward is Tesla, Tesla is famously very vertically integrated. They have a lot of their suppliers that are on board for many like many years, and they also have a lot of Ford contracts in place. So a year from now, what happens when the chips do run out? Mm -hmm. And then everyone's competing for the same battery materials. And Elon's saying we need to buy you know, the lithium directly from the miners. So that's, I think, it, it, this is the play, right? Is Do you believe in Elon and a management company there to actually go through that in the future? Or do you bet on the Fords and GMs of the world who have been doing this for Hundred years. Not at the same time while he's trying to reinvent Twitter would be right, 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 right. Pros Supermanian joining us here. We appreciate it.